Hi, I'm Mr. Castillo from Milton Middle School, and you're watching West Virginia History in two minutes or less. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the greatest feuds in American history, the story of the Hatfield McCoys. And growing up in Boone County, I heard of this story from a lot of different viewpoints. So let's get into this one. Here we go. Before the ink was dry on West Virginia statehood, the feud between the Hatfields and McCoys was heating up. During the feud, the patriarchs were William Anderson Hatfield, known as Devil Lance, who would go on to run a successful timber business where he employed dozens, and Randolph McCoy, who went by Randall or Old Raynell. He owned land and livestock on the Kentucky side of the river. The families lived along the Big Sandy and Tug Fork rivers, with most of the Hatfields on the Logan County side of West Virginia, including present-day Mingo County. Most of the McCoys lived on the Kentucky side of the river around Pike County. Both families were intertwined with marriages on the two sides, with some Hatfields living on the McCoy side and McCoys on the Hatfield side. Some say the feud began as far back as 1865 when the Logan Wildcats, a militia group led by Devil Ants and some other Hatfields, were part of a group that killed Aza Harmon, brother of Randolph McCoy, but many considered Aza a traitor for serving as a Union soldier during the war, including many of his own family. This incident in Kentucky would have a long-lasting influence on the great feud between these two families. Though to some, it all started with the pig. In 1878, Randall McCoy accused Floyd Hatfield, who was a cousin to Devil Lance, of stealing one of his pigs. Floyd's trial was judged by a cousin of Devil Lance. The main witness was Bill Staten, a relative of the McCoys, but had married a Hatfield. Floyd was found not guilty, further angering the McCoys. Two years later, on June 18, 1880, things heated back up when Bill Staten was brutally killed by two of Randall's nephews, who were later acquitted. They claimed self-defense after the attack. The next chapter in the feud began in 1880, just months after Bill was killed. Devil Ants' son, Jonesy, who was 18, started a relationship with Randolph's daughter, Rosanna, after meeting at an Election Day event. Fearing her family who didn't approve, she spent some time at the Hatfields in West Virginia. Randall wasn't happy about it and sent some of his people to get Jonesy and bring him to jail back in Kentucky. Fearing what would happen to him, Rosanna told Devil Ants what was going on. He sent his own people to cut them off and get his son back. Newspapers made this love story into something like a Romeo and Juliet tale, but truth be told, Jonesy later abandoned Rosanna while she was pregnant, and in 1881, he married her cousin, Nancy McCoy. The violence really hit hard on August of 1882 when three of Randolph's sons and two of Devil Ants' brothers were fighting on Election Day. Tolbert McCoy's brothers, Farmer and Randolph Jr., joined in and Ellison was stabbed to death. The authorities had the McCoy brothers, but the Hatfields wanted their own justice, so they captured the brothers, they tied them to pawpaw bushes, and fired dozens of shots at the three McCoy men. The law charged the Hatfields, but the charges later fell through, so the McCoys hired Perry Klein. Klein was an attorney who was married to Martha McCoy, the widow of Aza Harmon. Perry Klein had a beef of his own with Devil Lance, who'd won a lawsuit against him years earlier. Klein had charges reinstated, making many of the Hatfields wanted men. After hiding for some time, some of the Hatfields devised a plan to end it once and for all. Led by Devil Lance's son Cap and family friend Jim Vance, they ambushed the McCoys at Randolph's home on New Year's Day, 1888. His son Calvin and daughter Alifair were both killed. His wife was also badly beaten. Randolph was barely able to escape into the woods. A hired gun, Frank Phillips, was sent to get the Hatfields. He killed Jim Vance and captured some of them. The case was reviewed by the U.S. Supreme Court, and they ruled that those captured could be tried. The trial began in 1889 and ended with eight of the Hatfields and their supporters being sentenced to life in prison. Many believe Ellis Amounts, nicknamed Cotton Top, was scapegoated to take the fall because he was not mentally fit to understand what he was doing. After this event, the feud finally began to calm down. Years later, Randolph had become a ferry operator, and he died in 1914 from burns suffered during a fire. Devil Lance, who had long not been religious, was baptized at 73, and he died in 1921. Today, a monument stands in the Hatfield Cemetery, which has become a popular tourist destination in the area.